Jimmy. This was such a great episode. We're reviewing season four, episode five of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. And there were some there were some tidbits that I thoroughly enjoyed. But right off the bat, what did what were your overall thoughts of the episode? I, I, it, it, it was good. It was good. It, you know, t- to me, I should, I should have you go first, but uh, I'll go first. Um, this was a setup for future episodes. Right. It was kind of a filler episode setting up the, the future. What was missing from this show was the boulders from last week. What happened? Right. I was expecting some boulder removal. Um, so I that that wasn't there. And then we got the drill, but we only got 60 feet of it, right? Um, what's his name? What's his name? Dragon? Snake? Snake dragon? Dragon. 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 Um, why do I want to call him snake? I, I it, he looks snakish. There's there's a, a movie around that. Um, but anyway, so they're dropping the camera, right? And I was hoping we'd get back to that object from last year. And we didn't get to that. But it, I think it's a setup, right, for a future episode. Um, they brought in a couple of, uh, of um, uh, tribe members. And, again, a setup maybe for a, a future episode, something going on. And then we had fireworks right <laughs> we had fireworks and 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 rocket launches um you know and again uh, a setup for a future episode the purple dot in the background right that was very interesting setup for a future episode so that's what i, I think that's you, you need to do this um, as a, as a network, there's so much stuff uh, being covered um, at Skinwalker, and they and they brought that up in this episode. We're in the triangle. We're in the the mesa. We're we're drilling. We're moving boulders. We're uh, 1.6 gigahertz. The triangle. They they've got so much going on that any one of those areas of the show could take up a whole episode. Um, including this one. So I think that's what they did with this episode, Christina. They set it up uh, for the second half of the season. I see what you mean. There was a lot of open-ended questions. We didn't get a lot of answers in this episode, but it did, as you mentioned, hype up for the rest of the season. Maybe we'll get answers in the next episode, kind of what it was hinting at at the very end of like what's to come kind of deal. But there were a few aspects that I thoroughly enjoyed. So let's get straight into the very beginning. They brought these straight shot drillers that they had last year or last season where they had to drill into the Mesa. Last year, they received these little filaments of metal that was believed to be the same kind of metal that rockets have when they are out in space. So they brought them back. And I I have a few images to share. And I I liked that they were able to that we were able to see some reoccurring faces and people that they've worked with before. It was probably makes it easier on them as well. But they were only on the uh, in the episode just for a few moments. But you bring up a really good point. Thomas had mentioned, as you can see, it looks a little bit different than last year. A lot of boulders were removed. And you said, well, what happened? We wanted to get more information on how they removed those boulders because in the last episode when they did so, the guy says, no, we can't move anymore. It'll be too dangerous. And there'll be this downfall, literally. Like, there'll, there'll be a slide of rocks. We can't move it. They're Somehow big. they were able to do so. And they're big boulders. So they're not. Oh, small. they're huge. I mean, they're ginormous. Yeah. Um, so we, we didn't see that. Yeah, but. What I would like to mention is that when I had Eric Bard on the panel discussion with the Skinwalker Ranch team, he mentioned that only 0.7% of the work that they do actually make it on the TV show. And while they are conducting real scientific experiments, you know, the the production team is creating entertainment Mm -hmm. and they are lucky enough to go ahead and document what's happening on the ranch. But what the team members are doing they're doing regardless on if there are tv cameras there or not they're still going to do their job and i think that while this is a a very entertaining show 
from the times that I've spoken to people on the ranch, I've done, you know, a, a multiple amount of interviews. It doesn't always seem like the TV show gives it like full on justice of the work and dedication and the time that they do with the investigations done there. Now, what what do you think um, this is? It's on everybody's mind. And by the way, I like uh, this comment here more on the red stuff. Um, and that was that was again, that was pretty interesting. I'm not a geologist, so I don't understand what that could be. Um, and she's talking about when Dragon, you know, put the uh, the the camera down and and they yeah, right there. And they picked up the uh, the red looked like dust, you know, some some kind of coating um, in that in that little crevice that they went down into. But here's the number one question I think that everybody has, uh, aside from you know what's going on there. But what what is this a, a dome? Is it a dome? Is it is it the top of a, a spacecraft? Is it something that is just natural? Um, but what is this dome and the shards that they picked up? You can go ahead and and uh, show that image uh, that they got from the last drill. Um, they've described it as the coating on the outside of the space shuttle, uh, the thermal shield, which is mainly ceramic. Um, it, so you can enter Earth's atmosphere. Now, isn't wouldn't that be interesting? The question is, is that some kind of natural uh, formation of something that resembles the the outer layer of the space shuttle? Or is this something artificial? Is this something that's manufactured? And if it is, what's it doing, uh, you know, buried underneath the mesa? What do you think this dome is? Do you think it's a craft? Do you think it's the dome of a city? I don't know. You know, I that's I, the million dollar question, Jimmy. And that's those are the answers that they're trying to look for and that we're so invested in since season one. And here we are in season four. We still haven't received any answers, but it seems like they are really working to attempt and find those by getting back this team, these straight shot drillers, to go ahead and drill once again to see if they're gonna find anything. But you bring up a great great point about the red rock red dust kind of thing they just touched on it we, we we hardly got any information other than dragon stating it's pretty anomalous it's very odd it's very out of place it shouldn't be there and that was kind of it and it left us on a cliffhanger but it seems that hopefully in the next episode we're going to receive those answers but looking at this drill right here what what the tv show was trying to elude was Eric had stated, can this go, we need this to go about 300 feet deep within the Mesa and two degrees off north. Is your machine that accurate? Can it do something like that? And they were like, yeah, sure, no problem. And that, and then it left us there. And we're like, no, give us more information. We want to know everything that's going on. But at the same time, during these, during this drilling, the team had set up a little tent with their tables and chairs and computer equipment to also look at the 1.6 gigahertz that was really focused on in this episode that with all of their experiments they were also looking for that signal as well and I think that's a pretty interesting tidbit to mention and something that we've seen consistently since the very beginning in, in season one yeah but that wasn't the question the question was what do you think the dome is what do you and think? like I had stated, that's the million dollar question. We don't know. I, I mean, what do you think it may be? Well, what I would like it to be is obviously an alien craft. That would be the right, coolest right. thing on the planet and out yeah. of this world. No doubt. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I mean, what if? I mean, what if? I, that 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 what what's going on here with that? Um, I, you know, and then, and then we have the sec the second structure, um, that is tall and thin. Um, it, I think there's, they keep throwing down, uh, 120 feet, right? I think that's what they were suggesting. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty big. And that's what they're drilling yeah. towards now. Um, and then the episode. So this is the deal. 60 feet. 
right? Got the walkie talkies, right? We got Travis. How far? Uh, they sent uh, uh, Thomas, right, to the top of the hill. Okay, how, how far are they? And they're 60 feet. In. Okay. And then it just stopped right there. So we've got another 200 plus feet to go before we get to some more answers. Now, next week, on next week's show, when we come back and we do this review, are we going to be talking about what they discovered? Are we going to be talking about the boulders? Are we going to talk about the 1.6 gigahertz? Um, they caught another UAP, right, that was flashing um, when they were going to the purple dot. Um, are we going to the, – the, uh, the team member uh, that they brought in with the uh, with the lasers. Uh, that, Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the 1.6 okay. uh, gigahertz. Not much there, not in this episode, but what did he see? What can he add to it? Did he collect any data? Again, all of this setting up for the future. And what is up with these rocket launches? Something's cool. interfering. Something is interfering. So, you know, I I don't I just don't I just don't think that um a breakdown in the system like that. They did two failed launches in a row, finally got to a third, they did a fourth. Um, but to have these failed rocket launches, that seems a little suspect to me. I think that there's there's there is a phenomenon, there's some kind of anomaly in the air there. It's it's very interesting. It is. And there were a bunch of things that you touched on that I would like to get to a little bit later. But the next piece that we saw in the show was the interview at Homestead 1, where Candace and Tom Lewis spoke to two Ute tribe members, Mikey Rivers and Pete Ute, I believe is how you say his name. And the information that they provided was fascinating. I absolutely love when they bring natives on the ranch and to talk about their experiences or the folklore that has been passed down for generations because that information is incredibly valuable. And what Mike dropped, Mikey, what, what he dropped there was so fascinating. And I think that could be a, a whole book in itself, a whole episode. And I wish that they were able to speak more, at least in this episode. They probably spoke for hours. I can just assume, but only a small segment made it on the show. But what Mikey had mentioned, this is the guy in red right here. He stated, and he didn't give the year, and I'm a bit sad about that but he stated that he saw an actual skinwalker with one of his family members that was as close to him as the fence is right here so if, if his body was here and the fence is right there that's how close he was to a skinwalker a while back and he mentioned in his account that it was standing on two legs and then it saw them and it went on all fours and ran into the forest looked back was a little bit more startled and continued moving closer um to the forest but then he mentioned in 2013 he saw a dozen ufos not just one not just two but over a dozen and they were all different lights of blue green and possibly purple as well but here's the interesting aspect of this particular ufo sighting he stated that one of them chased him down and he felt threatened in all the times that you and i have researched ufo sightings ufo encounters the sense of feeling threatened isn't always there yes it is sometimes when people feel like they're they feel like they're being surveyed by a ufo but that's not always the case and for him for mikey when he was around the uinta basin he had not only seen what he believes to be a skinwalker, but he had also seen a had seen a dozen UFOs. So I find that aspect pretty interesting. When he said that, he he just points. He goes right over there, right? Yeah. I thought, wow, wow, that's pretty interesting. And then he said uh, they got sick. Remember, and they got nauseous and. And as soon as they left the property and got home, they got their feet back under them, and uh, it uh, it lasted for a few hours. But this is something that's been going on with other members uh, of of the ranch, specifically. I think it's Thomas, right? Right. So yeah. all of them. Tom Lewis had a heart issue last season. That's right. That's right. Um, Thomas had a head injury. 
Travis had radiation burns. Um, Kayla Bench had this weird eye thing where like it gave like these ripples and the doctor couldn't explain what was going on. That's right. That's right. All, all of them have had something really weird except for Dragon. Dragon's the only, well, he looks healthy. See, Drag, Dragon looks healthy. Uh, plus, you know what? He's armed. So who's going to mess with Dragon? Right. The entities are going to leave him alone. Let, let me, I'm just going to say this. It, I have, I've talked to uh, people that have seen skinwalkers and specifically uh, a family that has um, a business <clears throat> that's very close to skinwalker ranch. I, I don't want to get into details, but their home, which is not that far from skinwalker ranch. They were telling me that they would come home at night and, that that the skinwalker lived in their near a shed in their backyard and would come out right <laughs> they would pull up in the driveway and they, it would run into the backyard now i i don't know about you you know and i know i'm a grown up and i and i'm supposed to be that stuff terrifies me i don't know how i would react would mikey coming back to the ranch for this interview would you if you would you go back that stuff scares me. Well, Tom Lewis had mentioned that it requires a lot of courage in order not only to return to the ranch, but also to speak out about the skinwalker. Because when it comes to Native Americans, they're almost, I don't want to say the word prohibited, but it's really frowned upon to talk about the skinwalker because it's believed that if even if you mention it, you will attract it and attract their curse, attract the, the negative energy attached to them. And Peter... The guy right next to Mikey, him right here, he had mentioned in their traditions, when it comes, when they see anything weird, have it be like weird UFOs in the sky or the skinwalker, they're running the other way because they fear that these types of entities, these anomalous encounters can attach to their soul or their body and create negative effects afterward. So they do not want to do, they don't want to have anything to do with these types of things. However, Candace asked a really, really great question that I think is so appropriate. And she asked these two young men here stating, do you think with the new generation that the people a part of these Native American tribes are able to speak more about this? Or do they feel more confident? And Mikey, the guy in red, stated, with, a, with this type of show and the work that you guys are doing, it's opening doors. More people are willing to speak out about it because they're being inspired by other Native Americans talking freely about it without having this increased sense of fear. And if you remember, spe you know, specifically about skinwalkers, um, uh, last season, or was it season uh, two, uh, the llama that was attacked. You remember? Oh, you remember? I know. I think that was season one. It's season one. And uh, was it that? Yeah, I guess it was season one. Okay. Anyway, a llama, the cutest thing, like on planet Earth, right? And... Uh, um, that was, that was, it, that was hard for me to watch. And yeah, the, the, the poor alpaca was just like, alpaca, that's what yeah, I'm, which they look very similar. Right. Uh, they're very, very similar, but yeah, it was an alpaca, which they're a little bit cuter, just a but, touch. But what, 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 you know, a harmless, you know, what would go and attack, uh, the llama and right around that episode or the episode after that. Uh, the the cow died underneath the tree. Remember that? Just just collapsed and died. And the Linda Moulton Howe came out, and they did that whole thing uh, with that. Um, is is that Skinwalkers? Is is that related to that? Or are we talking about some kind of predatory and predat predatory animal, uh, a wolf or something? Well, see, that's a really important question. When it comes to the cattle mutilation, there was no explanation. They allowed the the dead the dead cow to lay in in a certain area of the ranch, and it was untouched by predators. It was untouched by bugs. It was just left there, and that's a really weird aspect when it comes to cattle mutilations that it wasn't man made. However, for the alpaca and the attack, they figured that it was a coyote attack, and that's what was told. Uh, what they told me a little bit later. So. You have one that's really strange, which is the cattle mutilation, and you have another one that's 
that is that had been explained, but it's still rather odd um, because I think that people that live in the city, right, or that don't live in these rural areas, you don't think that something like that is as common or as prevalent as you would see on a TV show such as such as this one. Now, if we get to um, uh, some answers here, do you think that um, uh, ultimately that we're, it, there's some kind of artificial, not natural uh, structure underneath the mesa that is possibly emitting signals that 1.6 gigahertz, which I find very interesting, and then that is responsible for all of the other supernatural and paranormal uh, events that are going on that aren't necessarily, you know, a skinwalker or, some, you know, that the, the, it could be something interdimensional that is being created by what is underneath that mesa. And wouldn't that that'd be like the biggest news in, in, in human history if that was the case? It would be pretty fascinating. Uh, uh... I'd want to be there to see it. That's for sure. When the news breaks, I want to be alive. That That is one thing that I just, I hope to be there for. But one um, new person that we saw on the ranch was David Mason, this guy right here. And he had invented certain equipment that he already had and he brought onto the ranch. One of them being the three spectrum analyzer. David Mason was also in the movie The Tear in the Sky. I had the pleasure to speak with him. And let me just tell you, he is a brilliant mind. He's an incredible scientist as well and an amazing inventor with a bunch of patents. And I was so happy to see him on the show. I was like, oh my gosh, no way, I'm a big fan. Um, but I, I wish that he was able to share more of his knowledge. Instead, we got a lot of facial expressions and he kind of he kind of looked a little clueless, bless his heart, because again, he's brilliant. And you can find the show, the interview right here on this channel. And I was like, they didn't give him justice. He's so great. And and we we only heard him say like two words. Yeah, he, he, the it swings back to this 1.6, right? Right. So he starts broadcasting 1.6. I want to know. There's a uh, his uh, his three way. One was visible laser, and and two were invisible. Right. Uh, so it was visible, infrared, and ultraviolet. That's right. And then uh, with the carrier band of the 1.6 gigahertz uh, broadcast, the um, uh, it, it seems to me that they are able to whenever a distraction happens or or they're moving stuff or they're disturbing the, the dirt. Right. This this 1.6 gigahertz signal is incoming. But now they've turned around and they've broadcast it out. I want to know, you know, I want you just can't leave that there. There 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 must be some data uh, for us to to look at. I completely agree with you. I I felt again like there was a lot of open-ended questions. We we saw his equipment, we saw kind of this um, explanation that the TV show was giving on kind of how it worked. And then they just dropped it there. We got no data. We got no explanations. Um, all we know is that David brought in the equipment and that was kind of it. But at the same time, as this, this experiment was going on, Travis and Caleb were launching fireworks and rockets to see if it would provoke anything on top of the triangle. And as you had mentioned, Jimmy, two rockets failed and then two succeeded the two that succeeded thomas saw a very weird purple light in the sky now for us seeing it from the other side of the camera right it looked blue uh, it, in this case for thomas it looked purple right. but he saw it twice both times at the last two rockets were launched to the point that the, the whole team was doing a manhunt trying to find this this light and I, what happened? Well, no, it was Thomas at that point, which they should have done this already. We don't know how much time it, you know, because we're seeing the edited version of the show, right? Right. But, but they, they go out and, and Thomas is out there with his flashlight and he's got the radio and he says, and I agree with Travis Taylor. He says the most brilliant thing of all not only in this episode, but maybe in the history of Skinwalker Ranch. Let's fire another rocket. 
right? Let's see if we can get the, well, yeah, ex- why didn't you mention that the, after the first time you saw the purple uh, dot? Because when they go out there and they do the fourth launch, uh, when Travis goes, yeah, man, that's a great idea. Yeah, no kidding. And then nothing happens. Um, very, it, you know, I, I think the purple dot appeared three times, right? Right. I, I, I thought it only happened twice. It might have been more than maybe that the TV show twice? didn't capture. Was it just twice? Okay. I, I think so. But one thing that I was hoping to see with these rocket launches, with these fireworks, was Burnett to return from a uh, Photron cameras with that super high speed camera to take images while all this was happening. And we didn't get that. And I was like, I feel like that's probably one of the best pieces of equipment the team can have when conducting experiments to capture things that their human eye. I cannot. So if they can't bring the Photron cameras all the time that the company, they should at least, in my opinion, invest in a high speed camera so that they can do it themselves. Maybe they have already and we haven't seen it yet. But that is one thing that I'm like, I would really like to see. But in the aspect of the UFO sighting, that Thomas saw and then that Travis saw in when he's looking through night vision it kind of looked like the the image that he was seeing the light in the sky was kind of it was like kind of strobing so given that if it was strobing I wonder about the Black Hawk helicopter overflight and the conclusion that the ranch is being actively surveilled maybe this time it was a military drone which are fitted with strobing lights what do you think about that? Well, okay. So on that point, um, and I do agree with you, uh, but to that point, um, if I have one criticism about this episode, um, it would be this. It's not really a criticism. It's more of an observation because Travis says that that UAP was following Thomas and was directly above him. Okay. He said, when you went over for the purple light, this, why would Travis say that? Was it way off in the distance, or was this something that was ab- uh, observed uh, directly above the ranch? And was it following Thomas? Um, why? Why did Travis say that? Unless it's setting up something else for a future episode, because you have to be careful. You know, when you say something like that, you saw Thomas's face, right? Right. What? Right. Um, what is, is Travis, um, uh, suggesting an idea or was there actual data showing something? And, and if it was directly above Thomas, that would have been very small, very drone like. And if it wasn't their drone, whose was it? Right. So I, I don't know. Why did Travis say that? That's my critic that, that I think we needed answers for in this episode, Uh, Because that was very specific and interesting at the same time. It was. And it goes to show that there was a lot of questions that hopefully we'll get the answers to in the next episode or in future episodes. But I think my favorite aspect of this particular one was having Ute tribal members come on the ranch and tell their stories. I Again, that's just one aspect that I think is my favorite when it comes to this TV show. But what about yourself? One to ten, what would you rate it? This one? Yeah. Ah, uh, five. Five. I got to go five because it's a setup. It's a setup for future episodes. So, no, it's a half a shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like, um, it, you know, for me to go like last week and the week before, I was like nine, ten. I have no issues with with uh, throwing about a number like 10 or 9 um, because we had stuff there. This was, a, a, you know, a setup of future episodes. A, a great setup, right? What's going to happen next week? That's the thing. I, I feel like next week we're going to have some specific things uh, to talk about. I want to know what's going on with those boulders, Christina. I'm not going to let this go. <laughs> I'm not going to let this go. And and this drill, what is up with that? Um, I, I am so curious. Uh, yeah. So for that, uh, it, this was an episode that is, is setting up the second half of the season. And for a setup episode, it's a nine. <laughs> but, but for a data collection uh, episode, five. I go five. So then what do you want to see happen? 
in future episodes. Uh, I, 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 I want those boulders moved. I want a clearer uh, scan of uh, what is underneath. And I want an actual uh, forensic analysis done on the ceramic shards that uh, came out. Uh, is that manufactured or natural? Um, I think those are two critical things because if that's if that's manufactured and not natural, uh, I say bulldoze that whole mesa. Let's take that sucker down. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, yeah. What you're gonna leave it there? I mean, if if that's the case, if it is not natural, we've got a situation here. I mean, a real one. Um, and let's just let's just let's move the mountain. Let's move it. The overall purpose of the work that they're doing there and being so meticulous when it comes to the mesa is that they, they simply do not want to damage the anomalous object item thing that is in the mesa. Um, so like if, if you just bring the whole mesa down, if you move it, what if it damages that exact thing that you're attempting to look for? I mean, it's like with archaeologists, right? They're on their hands and knees for weeks, if not months, with That's a right. tiny little comb and a uh -huh. little brush yep. and just doing its thing, right? Yep, and yep. Um, it's tedious, but it's they tedious. want to preserve the relics that are there. See, and you can kind of tell they want to respect the land and the history and the heritage. I, I, I totally get that. But if we're talking about, uh, you know, th th this ginormous structure that is not natural, if that's what it turns out to be, you're not going to leave it there. No, 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 no. And if I was in charge, right, if I was Brandon, I bring out the big guns. <laughs> I, would, man, I would just bring in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's 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 dig and and let's uncover this. There's no way you could leave it buried, and you wouldn't leave it buried for years. No way. No way. The biggest archaeological find in the history of the world. No, you wouldn't leave that buried. You would you would go in and and get to it quickly. You know, and I could see. Uh, this is where, listen, if that was the case, it would be like the movie Contact. The government would come in, they would claim the land, Bureau of Land Management, Fugle is out, and they would uh, take over uh, what what is to be discovered there. They wouldn't leave it buried. Yeah. So then what do you think the origin of all the strangeness is when it comes to the ranch? <sighs> Uh, everything points to the mesa you know there's something there's something under there um i i i don't know 1.6 gigahertz is very specific it it pops up i i think that the answers are are you know under under those rocks under those boulders hmm well, Mike says something really funny. He says, episode six should be titled Drillin' Like a Villain. 100%, man. I'm, I'm so with you, Mike. I'm so with I would. You know, I, now, I would do it with respect. I, I would. But I wouldn't sit on my hands. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait. I would do it as safe and re as respectful as possible. But, man, I'd be digging. I would. I would be digging. I wouldn't drill. I would just remove. Okay, rock on. Yeah, That's a little bit more work, but something that you could definitely do. And Brian, thank you so much. The object they found in the opening with the snake cam is a monster energy drink can. <laughs> we didn't see any logos just yet, but maybe we'll we'll see something like that. But thank you yeah. so much for supporting the channel, it Brian. Had a, it had a weird shape to it. You remember, it was kind of curved with that thing on the top, and it was black. It looked like it had lines down the side, and uh, that didn't look... Now, it could have been dropped in, right, uh, over the years. Somebody could have oh. dropped something down there and never uh, retrieved it. That That's totally possible. Um, but it doesn't look like all of the, the the rocks and the debris that are around it. It was a different color, and it just didn't it didn't look natural. It didn't fit didn't fit what was you know what I mean. What was surrounding it? So. Right, and then also they were hinting at in the next episode that it's uh it's something used for cloaking devices. Uh, selenium, selenium, 
something something along those lines and i was like okay well that's i mean that's a really big statement to say something like that and then to find that in the mesa so hopefully we'll get more information on that little tidbit because it's like whoa whoa <laughs> It's uh it's a very it's a very entertaining show. Um what what I do enjoy about Secret of Skinwalker as opposed to other shows uh that are out there is we're not getting it all at once, but we are getting answers in the research as we move along. Um I don't think they're anywhere close to having answers um or or closure yet. Uh, but at least with this show, we we get a little something all the time. And that's the part about it that I really enjoy. It's a great show. Great series. It is. And, and that's another really great aspect about this particular show. Like you said, compared to other ones, is that they are truly attempting to find answers. While other ones that are kind of more in the paranormal, in the cryptid side, it's a, it's a lot of shock factor, right? But they they are documenting the research going on there at skinwalker ranch these other ones are like whoa look at this wow that's so wild right but in this case we're seeing more than that and i mean it's a restricted format time wise as well you only have 45 minutes to look at a week's worth of research so we don't really get to see much again as eric mentioned we only see 0.7 percent of the work that that they do there on the ranch. Well, it's 365 days in the year, you know. And, right. and, and there's what, 12 episodes? Yeah, I'm not going to, um, uh, uh, when it comes to things like, let's just, you know, Bigfoot. And I've made this joke now for 10 years, but you know how those shows are going to end. You know, you know, you know, this yeah. is dance, you know, you know, the ending, you know, the ending of the shows, you know, the ending of the season and yeah. you know, what's going to go on next season. Uh, Secret of Skinwalker is not that. All right. So right now it's pretty solid and, and we're slowly getting answers. It's, it's very intriguing. Well, man, this is my third show today. Third. Rock on. Rock third on. Show, and uh, now I've got to get ready for <laughs> The Black tonight and uh, Maureen St. Germain. So uh, thank you, everybody. Christina, you're the absolute very. Are you going to head over to Discord now? Well, actually, right after this, the premiere with Bryant Arnold, a.k.a. Dragon, will be premiering on my channel, uh, going into detail on his experiences and his work when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch. So you don't want to miss that. It's at 2.30 p.m. PST. That is it for today. Thank you, everyone. and. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.